There are shows with psychics. And there are shows with doctors. But there's no show like the psychic and the doc. Your practical paranormal power unleashed. This show synthesizes the talents of world-class medium Mark Anthony, the psychic lawyer, psychic explorer, and street smart spiritualist, behavioral psychologist, Dr. Pat Vasily. All subjects are on the table and no topic is taboo. Inspiration, insight, action, and fun as Mark Anthony connects callers with loved ones in spirit in tandem with Dr. Pat's fresh, no-nonsense, street-smart, intuitive insights. And she is hilarious. Extraordinary problems require extraordinary solutions, which may come from this side or the other side. This is The Psychic and The Doc. And And it it starts now. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Let me get myself over here closer to the mic. Hey, we've got a great show for everybody tonight. Thank you for tuning us in and turning us on. For those of you out there, like if you're thinking, oh, what show am I listening to? Oh, it's The Psychic and the Doc. And I am Dr. Pat. uh, And I am here with my amazing world-renowned psychic lawyer, the Persic Psychic Medium Lawyer, the person that best-selling author, you you just name it. He's just cracked the whole world open with a new dialogue and a new narrative on what it means to be or have near-death experiences. But more importantly, what does it mean to tap into the frequency? What does it mean to understand the frequency? What does it mean to know that what you're about to experience in this show today and what we're getting ready to talk about is this incredible place So here's what we want to talk about today, because we may start out the show a little bit like, I don't want to say depressed. I'm going to say, I used a phrase the other day, which is probably going to become the title for my book. How do you go from despair to destiny? destiny? How do you know the amazing ways to choose happiness? Mark, this is a live call and show, y'all. 1-800-930-2819. Give us a call. You want to connect with us on Facebook. It's facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio. Jacob is at the helm. I got the whole team answering the phones. Mark, amazing ways to choose happiness. What do you got to say about that, my friend? I do. You know, we we have, you know, like, we are, I, I do. I have something to say. <laughs> we got Dr. Pat, we got me, we got Jacob, Rocky, the whole team on the phones. We are like the Starship Enterprise, <laughs> like ready to roll. Uh, you know, happiness, a lot of the, the work that I do, I talk about frequency and vibration. And I was at, um, I was in England and I was part of a study on on spirit communication and the facilitator she was really cool she was probably in her late 70s um maybe early 80s technical whiz she's like five feet tall um and she's from scotland and she had all those rolling r's you know i just love to listen to her talk brilliant 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 um afterlife researcher and what she did dr pat there was this room and there was 40 of us in the room we're all mediums she set up these special cameras. These cameras are used in paranormal investigation and they detect infrared anomalies. So, and then she had all these big screens so we could watch what the cameras were recording. And she goes, all right, now we're going to be doing an experiment and I, we're going to be drawing in spirits. <laughs> and she wanted everybody to sing Silent Night. And the thing is, um, Silent Night, everybody knows. And what's cool about this is there were folks from the UK in the group, and uh, I was the only American, but there were people from 14 different countries all together. So we're all singing Silent Night in 14 different languages, because apparently like everybody knows Silent Night. And we're looking at the screens and all of a sudden orbs start appearing. Now an orb is a ball of light and that's a spirit. And we're getting all excited, Dr. Pat. We're like Silent Night, we're seeing orbs. And and so she goes, ah, you like that, do ya? She goes, Noah is saying Jingle Bells. And apparently everybody in the world knows Jingle Bells. So in 14 different languages, we're singing Jingle Bells. And then the screens were flooded 
with orbs. Wow. And she explained that a higher, lighter vibration makes spirit communication easier because it removes the barrier. Now, Silent Night's a beautiful song, but it's a solemn song. Yeah. But Jingle Bell, Jingle Bell, you know, that's just like, you know, you want to just start you know, throwing peppermints and candy canes (laughs) around and, and, you know, drinking the, you know, the whatever. Um, And it was really, really fascinating. And the reason I brought that, that story up on purpose is that is how you go from despair to destiny. That is how you find your road to happiness. You've got to raise that vibration. And sometimes it's a lot more difficult than singing jingle bells and sometimes it's just as simple as doing that. It's, it's getting, getting into to your heart. But, you know, see, this is really the cool part of this. Because, look, it is, it's the story of the story. And what do I mean about the story of the story? Um, I jumped into this venue after I dial a wrong phone number and I don't hung, hang up. But... 2003. And I had the weirdest thing that I was doing. And I was doing this weird thing because it was really fun. And I was really depressed. I was on paper in 2001. You should have had the golden key to the city. You could have probably won America's Got Talent. All right. That's what people looked at me and they're like, okay. That's her, right? Nobody understood what was going on with me. They thought, okay, all right, here she is. Okay, she's got like, now she's got a few years of sobriety. Maybe that's it. No. Okay. And I tried to explain it. But I was so stuck, Mark. All I could think about, and you all can Google this. All I could think about was, because we're going to do this today. This is the surprise thing that I, I am excited about this. All I could do is I'm on the phone to the Linda. I call her the Linda, kind of like the queen. Uh, She's the Linda. Linda. It's got to be the Linda. It's the Linda. Yes, it is the Linda. (laughs) It's the Linda. And I don't know what I said. I don't know what I was doing, but I was just like rant. We do ranting and raving. And the bottom line is they said, I got to tell you, I am so crusted over. I have got to bust through this crust. The light bulbs went on. I put down my remote and crust busting was born. It became everything I talked about. I I didn't know what it was, so I had to create it. I mean, you all can Google it and you'll see it. When I got that wrong phone number, they said to me, what is going to be the name of your show? It's going to be crust busting your way to an awesome life. Please Google that. We have given awards, crust busting awards to Christina Aguilera, we are in her bio, to Jane Fonda, to Shirley MacLaine. We have given people crust-busting awards. But you see, I had to make a choice. I could have stayed on the couch, but who comes up with the weirdest thing called crust-busting? Well, we did. Today, and it was the name of the show, we had so much fun for so many years before the listeners renamed the show to the Dr. Pat Show. But that's what today is about. We have got to be all over this now because I want to ask everybody out there what Mark just said. There is a question. Are you ready to choose happiness today? And I'm not saying choose happiness, jump up and down, you know, like rainbows and leprechauns, any version of that, right, Mark? Because you talk about the frequency. Yeah. All right. Absolutely. That's, it. that's today. That's what we're doing today. Yeah, and you know, for the callers, and, and we're taking calls, 1-800-930-2819. And for the folks that are listening on Facebook Live, call into the show, 1-800-930-2819. And for everybody, uh, use that number. Also, when you call in, please turn off your computer speakers, turn off your radio, only have your phone um, um, on so that we can hear you clearly. And also... If you want to share how you go from the doldrums to happy, share that with us because what you say can affect other people in a positive way. And certainly, like even folks uh, that don't get an individualized reading or 
the insights of Dr. Pat, if something that comes through from a spirit to one of the callers, if something that Dr. Pat says touches your heartstrings, gives you that, that uplift, take it. Because like what you were saying, Dr. Pat, how did you get into radio business? It was a wrong phone number. But was it a wrong phone number? No. Or were mysterious no. spiritual forces guiding you into that direction? And the thing is, that's what I call spiritual synchronicity. So even if you don't get an individualized reading or advice, but what you hear from someone else or from what another caller says touches you in a positive way, take it. Because that's what this show, that's one of the aspects of what this show is about. Yeah. And so this is what we're doing today. And I want to tell you from Mark and I, from our perspective, you just all, you all should just know this and I'm going to go right to the phones. So what you should know about us, and it's going to be hard to believe, but the kind of work that we do and, you know, there, there's not really a name for what I do because people would love to put me in solely into psychology. My, fr my friends say I'm psych. They call me psycho spiritual. I didn't know that that was a like, psycho spiritual. Doesn't really sound very good. But no, they said, it sounds, oh, it sounds, like, okay. so it know, sounds like, kind I, of very I, Friday like, the Thirteenth. Okay, that's like right. Yeah, totally. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, sure. There's that. But the point is this: we're going to meet you wherever you are. You know, we do not bring our judgments to the table when we when we are in the realm of spirit. And I want to say that to everybody. We, we are going to meet you where you are, and we're going to help you get to where you want to go. Right, Mark? We, that's what we're here to do. We're, we're not going to tell you what to do. We can provide guidance. Well, maybe Dr. Powell. I, I was going to say, do. I might do a little telling. <laughs> but, you know, you know, and it's funny. It's like, yes, I'm a medium, but I'm also a lawyer. And sometimes I have to keep that in the cage because it comes out and it's like, come on, do this. Listen, pay attention. You know, but the thing is, um, we're here to help. We're here to help, but ultimately what you do is your decision. So um, what's that old expression? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink. Yeah. So, so we, can, we can give you the advice. The spirits can give you uh, the insights and the messages, but what you do with that is up to you. Let's go to the phones. What do you think? What do you want to do? Let's do it. Cool. All righty. First call we've got is Mary calling in from New York. Hey there, Mary. Mary. Hello. I'm here. Hey. How can we help you? Thank Welcome you to take the my show. Call. Thank yeah, you. you bet. I have a question. Saturday was my third year passing with my husband. But for the past two months, anywhere I go, the clock, no matter where I am, I see 222 two, two, every single day. I was just wondering if that's some kind of message for me or. Well, um, Mary, at the risk of sounding like a law professor, what do you think? <laughs> Let's start there. I don't, what do you know. Think? I don't know what to No, 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 you um, do know. When you see 222, two, two, what is the first thing that pops into your head? Feel, don't think. What's the first thing that touches your heart? My husband. There you go. I'm hoping. And the reason that I asked that, no, no, see, see, you're doing what I call the no, no, no syndrome. Yeah. You, you, okay. and, and see, what your husband's doing is emitting to you what's what I have termed a frequency beacon and spirits can direct your attention to a particular thing like a number or maybe every time I see a, a dragonfly I think of somebody but let's stick with 222 every time you see that number you think of him and that's because he is directing your attention to that and so in in my book the afterlife frequency I explain and I teach a four-step process how to recognize, accept, feel, and trust messages like that. And so that you avoid the no, no, no overthinking. Oh, I think of my husband, but I, I'm not sure. It's like, get rid of the I'm not sure. Let's go with that. Now, let's see what he's got to say. All right. Try, try not to move your phone around so much. We're getting a lot of distortion. Remember, everything that I do is about frequency. So when you're hearing, that's throwing a brick at your husband and making him back off. Let's not do that. Okay. Hey, um, is there somebody, maybe it was with him, but it could be with you or someone close to you. He's talking about bones, bones. I'm getting like an osteo, 
um, some type of bone issue, a fracture, or some type of, of issue with bone, bone health? Uh, I'm having a lot of problems with my bones and stuff because I fell. That, that, that's a yes. And here's yeah. the thing, Mary. The 222, that's a message from your husband. He's letting yeah. you know that he's around. He's aware of the bone health. And he said that what you're doing and the treatment for it isn't working. You need to take it to the next level. Mm -hmm. So so um, are you seeing a doctor about this? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. All right, is that what is it working? Well, um, on my fourth surgery, <laughs> I keep oh, getting okay. help now. Okay. So, yeah. Mark, yeah, she hopefully said she, the next. So, so, Mark, she said she had four surgeries and apparently she's going to get more. Okay. So, what I'm getting, and, and certainly um, make sure that you clear this with your doctor, is that follow the medical treatment, but it seems like there needs to be a bit of a holistic element here. And so you may need to be consulting with a naturopath because there could be some minerals, not could be, there are minerals and vitamins. And I'm getting the sense that you're taking some now, but you need to be expanding that so that it works in conjunction with the medical treatments. Um, and right. that's one of the reasons that you're getting the two, two, two. And what's interesting, okay. I'm curious, when did this when did you start noticing this number? Do you know if it was this About year? About three months ago. About three months wow. ago, yes. In 2022. Interesting. Yes. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Isn't it? Yeah. Numbers are very uh -huh. powerful. And Dr. Pat, um, we've had numerologists on the show. And, I, and Dr. Pat knows quite a bit about numerology. So, Dr. Pat? Um, turn in yeah. two, 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 over to you. Yeah. So first of all, I mean, you know, there are many ways to look at the number uh, two, two and one, one, those are master numbers. And the way you generate a master number is usually from um, it's usually from your birthday. Right. But it's not unusual for people to see numbers. Um, uh, Mary, turn your radio off in the background. I think that's coming through. Turn your radio off. I don't have any radio. There's, there's okay. nothing on. Okay. Right. Are you are you on your computer or something? Uh, are, are you no, on a nothing. Phone? Nothing at all. Okay. Is speaker it a speaker phone? phone? Yeah. Because, yeah. Turn that off. Yeah, turn okay. that off because we right. we're better. getting horrible sound distortion. Yeah, much better. Okay. Okay. I, I shut it uh, off. Wow, well, beautiful. Okay. So here's the thing. It doesn't matter where it comes from. It came to you. And the master numbers are one, one or two, two, or the derivative of those, right? And those are master numbers or, you know, let's just talk about spirituality. So it's not a mistake that what we're doing tonight and what Mark's doing to connect you is connecting. I think the question that I have though, is to tie into what Mark says, how, how is everything going for you with the whole joint bone thing? On a Not scale good. of one to ten, that's what I. That, okay, now now we're getting into. I would it. Okay. say an eight. I would say okay. an eight. Oh, an eight's pretty good. Um, but are you feeling like you're getting what you need to get resolved without sharing personal information? No. no. Okay. No. Are you afraid to get another opinion? I'm actually starting pain management next week. No, so are I you, am going on to. No, that's okay. Afraid of a number. Are, yes, you're right. Yes, yes. Are, are you are you open to get another doctor's opinion? Yes. Okay. So when you get these spiritual numbers, you have to look outside yourself for an answer. Right? Okay. Um, and I know a lot about doctors. I also know a lot about getting second opinions and third opinions and fourth opinions. And I will tell you, we will have doctors on the show like Dr. Sharon Martin, who will say, get another opinion. But the question okay. really is, I mean, if this is your health and this is your body, is the pathway to happiness for you and knowing that you have the freedom to make a different choice or decision? You see what I'm saying? Right. Okay. Yeah. Makes sense. It, 
if you're happy with everything that's going on and you're on a healing path and I don't know what that is and you don't have to share it, you're good to go. But if there's any question mark at all about what somebody is doing or how they're doing it, you have the right to seek out another opinion. Okay. I would definitely do that. Yeah. Well, yep. see, Thanks that's a so that's much. a yes. That is a yes. See, that's also what one is. Right. One is yes. Okay, good. Thank you so much for calling in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. I appreciate you taking my call. Thank you. Yeah. So oh, you bet. Uh, I got to tell you, I have a history about doctors and stuff, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I learned how difficult it is to really ask for a second opinion. And then I learned how important it was. It, it is. And what people have to keep focused, a lot of times... You don't want to go for a second opinion because you think, well, I like this doctor and I want to hurt his or her feelings. But you have to realize that this is your body and your health. And a good doctor is not going to be offended by people getting a second opinion because they are not magicians. They are, you know, they study symptoms. They study how to treat them, how, you know, they it's a cause and effect approach to things. And there may be a different school of thought on how to treat treat your problem. And, you know, generally less invasive is better, but sometimes invasive is absolutely necessary. Right. I mean, look, everybody has to get that pathway. But when you have that inkling of unhappiness, Mark, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, I'm just talking generalities. Uh, I, I shared a scenario of me after graduating with honors and dissertation won multiple awards, my postdoctorate. I mean, the work is still winning awards and I was depressed. So somebody just texted me and said, what were you so depressed about, Pat? I forgot to say. All y'all out there, try studying the consequences of broken promises, 1200 pages of interview notes from people. Try doing that for 10 years. Now, the shock was they wanted me to continue my research. So I thought I'm going to be done. And by the way, folks, I did not have the tools I have today. I did not. I did not have the tools that you're seeing Mark and I share with you today. Um, but today's show is about how do you rise up? How do you get to a place where you're not really feeling despair? Let's go to the phones. If you want to here, let's take one more caller before our break, Mark. What do you think? I do, but I have one question for you first, Dr. Sure. Pat. Would you have the skills you have today if you did not go through what you did then? Oh, not not at all. No, exactly. because I wouldn't have happened. Because, you know, I would not have stayed on that phone because, you know, we're from New York. You don't stay on wrong phone numbers. I mean, that's a miracle in itself. You know, it there was something about me that cracked open from that research. And I'm so grateful. And I will say this. I'm so grateful for the people that participate. I'm so grateful for Boeing. Hello, Boeing, your union people. Thank you for letting me do the postdoctorate work. I'm so grateful. Uh, but you know, yes. when you're a researcher, you can't hide what you have to say that people have said. I did not have the tools, but I had to learn the mark. So that was very observant of you, Mark. Why don't you be the doc for this next call? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, one thing I, I, I have learned is the school, there's nothing beats the school of hard knocks. Oh, boy. And, and we grow in response to adversity. Um, you know, you're going to run into maybe brilliant mathematicians who are 20, uh, brilliant architects who are 20, but you're not going to run into a brilliant psychologist or a brilliant lawyer who's 20 because the type of things that we do involves experience. You know, I see, you know, there's a lot of mediums who are young and that's great, but how can a 20 or 22 year old medium really counsel parents who've lost a child? I, you know, and, and I'm not faulting anyone because the only way that you obtain these skills is through living. And life is, is not a bowl of cherries. And, and the thing is, if everything were easy, what would inspire you to evolve and to grow? So everything that you, and I'm not just saying you, Dr. Pat, but everybody out there, everything that you've gone through, even the painful things are all part of the experiences that give you the opportunity to evolve. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Oh, well said. I love it. Uh, let's do this. Uh, Jacob, how about we take a really short break and then we go right to the phones and come back and we'll bring everybody right up to the hour. What do you think about that? Sounds um, good. Let's take a short break, everybody. Just remember to breathe. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody, welcome back. Um, we are going to get right to the phones. We're going to turn it over to Jacob in a hot second. But before we do, Mark has got a ton of things going on. And I, I want to just take a moment because we get rolling here and we almost forget. Please tell people how to find out more about you. Please visit my website, afterlifefrequency.com, just like my book, Afterlife Frequency. This weekend, Saturday and Sunday, I'm doing two light circle events, one on Saturday, one on Sunday. They're limited to six people each, so everybody uh, gets a reading. Next week, I will be the keynote speaker at Helping Parents Heal Conference in um, Phoenix, once again, if you go to my website, afterlifefrequency.com, go to the calendar of events, tickets are sold out there, but you can obtain a ticket to watch uh, the live conferences because there, it's going to be live streaming worldwide. And then between August 31st and September 4th, I'll be the keynote speaker mm -hmm. at the International Association for Near Death Studies. And um, I got more stuff coming up, but I think yeah. I'll just give you the next couple of weeks. But yeah, yeah, I got a lot going on. And of course, every week we're going to be um, here on air. Next week, I believe we have Dr. Lulu Shemek yeah. oh, coming on. Yeah, what a on. fun show that was. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah she's that's going to be awesome. fun for everybody. And I want to say the best way to stay in touch with Mark is sign up for his newsletter because he sends out these uh, uh, very informative uh, things about where he is, what he's doing, and all of the above. Uh, and, you know, this is part of how we all try to stay connected with everything. This show is one way to do it. Jacob, I'm going to kick it back to you. Where do you want to go? Yeah, next up, we've got uh, Marco calling in from Atlanta. Hey there, Marco. All right, Marco. Hello. Hey, how are can you? you? How can we... Yeah, loud and clear. Welcome to the show. You're live. How can we help you? Uh, well, actually, I had sent in a question on the website uh, some weeks ago. And it had to do with uh, the fact that uh, pretty much all my life, I accompany people as they die. And um, I had a, an experience during one of these uh, journeys uh, in which uh, the individual who I did not have any relationship to at the time, but uh, found that I would have had later, um, this individual tried to get me to uh, continue uh, with her. I didn't know it was a her at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and kept trying, trying to encourage me to uh, to come on, come on. You know, it's good, and so forth and so on. And I simply stopped at a point that uh, I felt was kind of a boundary, and I. I simply said, telepathically, I simply said, uh, it's not my time. So now that, of course, raises the question, if I know when it is not my time, do I know when it is my time? First off, um, Marco, I, I remember your question coming through, through my website, and uh, it is an honor to talk to you because I know that you are a distinguished college professor, that you've taught courses on death and dying, and thank you for, for yeah. calling into the show. Yeah. Um, so first off, for the benefit of the listeners, what you experienced is what's known as a shared death experience. And when yes, people course, who, right. Are, right, who are dying there are people in close proximity to them who are not dying, which in that case was you and your electromagnetic soul, the, the brainwave frequency of your soul touches theirs in the transition process. So you experienced her EMS, electromagnetic soul, leaving her body and quantum leaping to the other side. And basically you instinctively knew, and the other side knows that, okay, Marco, it's not your time yet. It was her time, but it's not your time. 
So that's what was happening with you. And the reason I'm explaining that, I know Dr. Pat understands that and you do, but I want to make sure that all of our, our listeners are aware of the phenomenon of shared death experiences. I, in the thousands of readings that I've done, people know when it is their time on a soul level. Um, from my own experience, I've seen this happen in many people. And certainly as folks get older, you start wondering, well, when am I going to know when it's my time? I believe that you're, you will begin to have a feeling that things are winding down. But if you don't get that sensation, that means let her rip and keep on going. And I've seen this um, hundreds and hundreds of times. So there will come a point when you're going to know. My, my own mother, who was a very gifted psychic medium, about six weeks before she died, she had lunch with a friend of hers. And she said, I'm dying. And her friend Nancy said, what do you mean, Jean? What do you mean you're dying? She said, I can feel it. I feel it in my body and I just know. And she said that uh, I want you to be there for my family. She said, particularly Mark. She said, I know he's gonna, he's gonna take it really hard. And the day before my mom passed, I was working in my law office and I got a call from her. And she said, hey, honey, I made some spaghetti. Why don't you come over for lunch? And I went over to my mom's house and she looked tired and, but, but she was her bubbly self. And I had lunch with my mom and my dad. And just remembering this, it really touches my heartstrings. And before I left, my mother said, I have three such great children. And I want to thank you, Mark. Thank you for being my son. Mm. And she hugged me, kissed me, and said that she loved me. And I, I said, I love you too. She died the next morning. And the thing is, she knew. And it was a process. And when she knew, she was okay with it. Now, the rest of us weren't, you know, because, you know, right. mom died and my, my dad, you know, the, his wife of 57 years had passed and he, he was, he was devastated. But the thing is, there will come a time when, you know, uh, a lot of people say, well, how do I find that out? It's like, you just don't divine that it will come to you. D Dr. Pat, what are your thoughts on that? And Marco, I want to hear yours as well. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like well Marco versed. to comment back on what you said first, if he could do that. I'm sorry, I didn't hear that clearly. Uh, Dr. Pat, what did you say? Um, I think it would be a good idea for you to just, you know, comment on what um, what Mark just said. You know, is that, I, I a, is that your... That. I... Yeah, Marco, um, she, uh, before Dr. Pat chimes in, she wanted to get your feedback on what I just said. Okay, I, yeah, I, I understood most of what you said. I missed, I think I may have not heard the last part clearly, but let me respond uh, to mm -hmm. what you said in general. Um, okay. the, the phenomenon was interesting to me. Of course, as an anthropologist, I'm well familiar for many, many years with uh, cultures in which uh, individuals are, are able clearly to, to know and to say, this is my time to die, I'm going to die today, and so forth and so on. And they're right, they do. Uh, but in the Western cultures, uh, particularly the industrialized cultures, we, we don't often see that, at least not, not in an open sense uh, that it's discussed. Uh, I have had uh, uh, instances in which uh, I put students with uh, uh, patients who were essentially hospice patients, uh, but not in any immediate uh, risk of dying. And those patients have um, had experiences in which, some of them have had experiences in which they said to my students that, uh, well, I'm going to be going in a couple of weeks uh, or, or something on that order. And they do. Uh, so it, it's not it's not a an unknown phenomenon, as you pointed out, but nonetheless, um, it it does make me wonder um, how is it that we know this? 
Do we carry this knowledge with us throughout our lives, or does it suddenly occur to us, uh, oh, I'm on my way out? Uh, I think, uh, Dr. Pat, let me respond, and then I'll, yeah. I'll turn it over to you. It's all of the above, Marco. It's, I believe that there's a day we're coming in and a day that we're going out. In all the readings that I've done, when spirits address this, they talk about day coming in, day we're going out. And what we have a choice over is what we do with the time in between. So our, our soul, our electromagnetic soul, the, our higher self, the part of us that's connected to the collective consciousness is aware of this. And then there comes a point when our physical being seems to know this, particularly uh, when people have uh, health conditions that start giving them the heads up. But I've done readings for a lot of people whose loved ones died when they were very young. And they always said, he said he'd never make it to 30. She said she always felt that she was going to die young. She always said that. So they had this precognitive understanding that appears to have been carried within them through their soul. Does that make sense? Well, yes, it does. But, it, uh, you know, to play devil's advocate here, uh, it also raises the question of whether you're, in fact, talking with a seriously depressed person. Yeah, all right. Well, Dr. Pat, there's your. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, you know, so from my perspective, and I hope I, I adjusted my microphone correctly, uh, from my perspective, this is a complex question. And to give you a simple answer would just not do it justice. I will tell you there, and, and as you know from really teaching people about this, there are multiple schools of thought. I'm going to give you a pop culture thought. And basically, Kevin Costner in a movie called Dragonfly, right from our pop culture, you watch, I don't know how many, 90 minutes, maybe it's longer of this movie, to get to the end. And the punchline was, it's the belief that gets you there. It is the belief that gets you there. So that is a school of thought. And that school of thought digs so deeply that you have people like Bruce Lipton and so many other people have done scientific research on it and what it means. And some people actually believe I can believe my way to heaven. I actually did an interview about this the other day, but I also can believe my way to a point of death and a transition the way that I wanted to go. I will, I will make myself ready on my terms. And there are people that know this because they know that's what they want. They know it. And, you know, it, that's, and by the way, that is just one school of thought. There are so many around this. There are people that have a spiritual knowing about their life and their destiny, uh, including exact moments of when they're going to go. And then you'll get the argument from people, right? You get a panel of people together. I've actually done a panel on this. You get a panel of people together. And some people say, there's no argument on this. That person literally knew they picked one, 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 one of when they were going to go. They held that in their consciousness for months. And that's when they went. So this is one of these beautiful topics that we get to explore. And I think where we end up is where we are attuned to and atoned to. You know, we end up in the belief factor. I end up in the belief factor. I'm one of these people that somehow in some strange way, I don't quite know how, how I was made. But I end up into the place where I actually believe that we can believe our way into what our energy field is going to be after we leave the earth skin. Now, if you believe in hell, you may end up there. Now, that's just like an old school little term right there. That's just like hell thing. But I'm sorry, I'm coming off to binge watching the Netflix series Sandman. So, Marco, I'm giving you more to think about than you have answers about. But that's what makes this topic so beautifully interesting. Thank you so much for calling in. Uh, and and, and okay. Marco, go ahead, go ahead, please, please. Do, what, do you have something else you want to add? Uh, no, I, I want to thank you very much for taking my call. Oh, yeah, Mark no, this is fabulous, man. We could do a whole hour on this, but we got to get some of the other callers. Yeah, and Mark, you, right, right. Yeah, we're going to think about what you're saying here. Don't, don't think that Mark and I are going to get off of here. 
and not think about okay. this. <laughs> right. And All Marco, right. Okay. Marco, you are <laughs> welcome. You are welcome to call in anytime. Yeah. Thank you. Because it is thought provoking questions like yeah. that that help so many yeah. people that are listening. Totally. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank, thank you. Thank oh. you for the opportunity. Good night. I'm gonna keep I can't stop thinking about this. Thank you for that, Marco. Right. Let's go to the phones because I have a funny feeling we're going to get more people that want to talk about more of this. Yep. Jacob. Next up, we've got Yolanda calling in from New Jersey. Hey there, Yolanda. Hi, Yolanda. Welcome to yeah. the show. You're live. Hi. How how are you? I'm Thank good. You for we're, taking we're, my call. Yeah. What part of Jersey are you calling from? Uh, I'm sorry? What part of New Jersey are you calling from? Uh, the northeastern corner of New Jersey. Okay, I'm a Jersey girl too. Just asking. Just All right saying. then. Yeah, I got <laughs> every okay. once in a while. I got to get my Jersey on. How you can know, we help you? It, it's, I understand. It's funny, Doctor Pat. When people ask someone from Jersey where you're from, it's like, why do you want to know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Yolanda, part no. of my family's from Jersey too. Yeah. So it's like, get, get out it. of my yeah. business. But yeah, you following me? There you talking? You all, right. all right, Yolanda, you're talking to us, and we're listening. So go all ahead. right, how can we? How can we oh. help you? Okay, so here's the thing. It's almost. Every night, I feel a spirit downstairs, like in my dining room, living room, or kitchen. I could feel someone looking at me. And this is almost every night. So what I do is I tell her, I says, okay, I have a visitor. So then one night, I went downstairs, and it was already dark in the backyard. It was really pitch dark. And... I just happened to look up at the big picture window looking into the backyard, and it's like I saw two round white orbs. And I turned around, and I thought it was something moved in my kitchen, <laughs> and it didn't. So I don't know who it is. And before I called you, I just happened to look out that same picture window, and I saw a cardinal sitting on the back fence, staring right into my window. So this is, there is a great. Oh, oh my gosh, somewhere? Yolanda, I'm, I'm so glad that you called in. I'm actually giving a talk about this um, on how to see spirits. So the next time that you see uh -huh. that and you see the reflection, resist the temptation to turn and look at, at it head on. Try to observe it. See how I'm looking. I don't know if you can, if you're on camera, but try to observe this through your peripheral vision. And here's why: the structure of your eye, the front of your eye, has cones, which are for daytime vision, color, and details. Your peripheral vision is governed by rods, and rods are nighttime vision, and they're hypersensitive to light. And that's why, like, you can't look mm -hmm. at a comet full on. You have to look at a comet in your peripheral vision. And that's why a lot of times people feel they see a spirit in their peripheral vision. They turn and the spirit vanished. The spirit didn't vanish. It's just you're switching from oh. um, cones oh. to rods. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really fascinating. So you can do that. Now, I'm tuning in and I'm getting a female energy that has this very, um, I feel like I want to sit up straight very kind of proper, intense woman, but very loving, very mother-like figure, but she could be a grandmother, and she feels like she's connected to you through your mother's side of the family. This woman's passing was not a quick event. My lungs feel like they're burning, so there could have been a lot of, uh, like a lung disease, uh, could have been something else going on in her chest, like it could be like an emphysema or COPD. My pancreas, I feel like someone's jabbing me in the pancreas, so this may indicate pancreatitis, pancreatic cancer, but it could also be diabetes because um, uh, when your pancreas isn't functioning properly, this would be diabetes. And so this woman's passing was not a quick event and she's not here to scare you. She's looking out for you. Do you recognize this person? In other no, words, is there a woman connected? Hold on. Uh, yes, you do. Um, there is a woman connected to you, could be on the grandparent level or could be an aunt who had some type of long, slow passing, had blood sugar issues and issues with her lungs, breathing some type of problem. 
Uh, well, my mom's mother, who I met when I was a little girl, like three or four years old, she had passed away, but I never knew what she passed from. Okay. And there is a great... Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And then there was a great aunt, and she was a big part of my uh, childhood growing up. She would come and visit us every weekend. Okay. But, hold on. And hold then on. there's my mom. Does putt putt golf? I know most people probably play putt putt golf, but I'm seeing a putter. Uh, uh, anyone ever take you putt putt golfing? Uh, no, Mark, I'm sorry. I, I didn't understand what you're saying. Okay. So let me just, uh, so putt putt, is that like. It's just a little it, choppy. Yeah. So, but let me ask you a question, Mark. Putt putt, is that like the small golfing thing, miniature golf? Yeah, yeah oh, okay. miniature, miniature golf. Miniature golf. golf. Yeah. In Jersey, we call it miniature golf. Okay. In Florida, okay. call it putt putt golf. Yeah. It's yeah. where you like hit the yeah. ball through yeah. the windmill. Has anybody you know? ever taken you to go play miniature golf? <laughs> not lately. <laughs> Maybe, uh, I know, but no, that's not, not what we're asking. All right, here, here's the I thing. I tell you. Whoever yeah. this person is, she spent a lot of time with you when you were a child. Yeah. She may have taken you on miniature golf. Um, mm -hmm. You're overthinking things. Um, let me get right to her message. They are there to tell you that you've got to be more frugal, that um, you've got to um, clamp down on your spending and be much more frugal. Mm -hmm. Also, they're concerned, um, there must be some door or something in your house, one of the exterior doors that needs some type of repair. It just doesn't feel secure. So these are the type of things, these are two of the things that they're coming through to tell you. There's some type of door or it could be a window that needs to be reinforced. So that's what the message is. Mm -hmm. What do you think okay. of that? What do you think of that? Well, I I have all new windows in, in my house. So in all the oh. windows and the door. Right. Okay. I love right. this message because you know, it doesn't matter that you have all new windows. What what matters is you probably should check them. <laughs> yes. And also you have to realize okay. that see when I do a private reading on a one-on-one, -on -one, yeah, yeah. I spend 15 minutes at the beginning explaining things so we can avoid mm -hmm. a situation like this. The issue is windows and secure. Mm -hmm. So I may be misinterpreting it and they may be letting you know that they're aware that you just got new windows, but I get mm -hmm. something about a door needing to be reinforced, but they're also telling you to cool it on your spending. So she just uh, bought new yeah, windows. She just, just bought new bought windows. All the windows. <laughs> Mark. <laughs> well, yeah. Well, you know, <laughs> spending spending money on things like that is good. It is um, good. You know, spending it, is it good. on frivolous things—that's what you have to watch out for. But the yeah. point is, these spirits are not here to haunt you or to no. scare you. They're looking out for you, Yolanda, yeah. and that's why they're coming through. Yeah. I know. Look, I want to. I, I want to just follow up with what Mark said a little bit because I think you're going to have to use a little discernment. Um, first of all, uh, what are you allergic to? Uh, environmental. Thank you. A lot of the environmental. Okay. Uh, so allergies, when Mark, when yeah, Mark is um, talking to windows, you, okay. yeah. so listen, listen, when Mark is talking to you before, when he was saying, who is it with the breathing or something, whatever he said, right? You have allergy out. Al you're allergic to this, right? The You have some allergies, correct? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, there we go. <laughs> okay. So I don't want to kind of go back, Mark, but you get what I'm trying to say. I, I so, know exactly. So his yeah. message is to you, right? Now, I'm going to try to connect something that may not make sense to you, and I'm going to try to hurry up. When you get new windows and doors installed, and I'm not saying this to you, and I'm not saying it's about your installer, they use chemicals. Are you with me? Yeah. How long ago did you get the windows and doors, please? Oh, the windows have been installed at least six years ago. Okay. So they're no drafts or anything. They're really good windows. Good, good. Okay. So I'm just going to cut to the chase really quickly. Whenever you get a reading like this or Mark really hits it, here's the thing. 
I don't know what it is, but most of us right now, especially if you're in Jersey, I'm just going to say it outright. Most of us have had to mm -hmm. put air purifiers and cleaners, and I have a scrubber right here running right now next to me in our homes because we yeah, I have a essential one. Okay, you have one? When was the last yeah. time you cleaned a filter on that thing? Oh, let's see. This is August. It was put in in June. The, the, I have central air, so I put new filters in. Clean the Real filter. Clean the filter. Check the filter, okay. please. It's not a door okay. and it's not a window, but it's almost like it. It's a gateway to your lungs. And I have I'm, I don't know if this is true, but I'm just going to leave you with this. I have to change my filter once a month. I don't know what the heck it's bringing in the house, but I'm just saying, okay? That's kind of an indirect yeah. way to interpret what Mark said, okay? Now, I'm going to hit you up with the spending. I want to say something. I, I want you to just use discernment in your spending, okay? So, like, if you're on the home shopping network for, like, three hours, just cut it back to an hour, okay? 15 minutes. <laughs> oh, my God, forget it. Now you're making me... <laughs> He's making me have a hot sweat. That's impossible. <laughs> but look, it's just a matter of discernment. Um, when it comes to self-care, I am a total take care of yourself and do spend money on yourself. But you know what, what he's talking oh. about, right? And I have a funny feeling you're getting ready to buy some. Yeah. Yet. I don't think she bought it yet, Mark. I don't think she's got it yet. Yeah. But that's why I, could you repeat that again, on. Dr. Pat? Yeah. I don't think you bought it yet, but I think you're thinking of buying stuff. I don't know what that is, but do me a favor. I know I just did. I bought it yesterday. Oh, Mike, am I, we a day uh -huh. late? Are we a day? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you to take it I didn't it back. need it. I just wanted it. I'm sorry? Good job. So you see what we're saying? So next time, just think it through a little bit. Okay? Yes, I will. I already yeah. said to my, myself, no more spending. That there I know I go. feel bad. No, right, no, we, it's no more frivolous spending. That's different, okay? All right, you need to spend some bucks and get uh -huh. those filters changed. Oh, I do. I have a, I have a fresh one in the closet, in the box. Okay. Right, but they're yeah. in the box. Okay, I'll put a new <laughs> one in. All right, don't hurt yourself, get it done. Wow, thank you so much for calling in. I'm sorry, we, we uh, Mark, we, we got to it. <laughs> yeah, we, we are... You know I sent what? you a, a message in my chat and I said, uh, allergies, ask her about allergies, right? Yeah, I, I saw it because now that's making sense. Now with it the makes lungs sense. And, and that's yeah. why I love working with you because I'm giving the information and you as an objective observer can help people connect the dots. And that's why Dr. <laughs> Pat and I are going to be back <laughs> next week and the week after and the week after that. And we will be taking your calls. So. I love it. Oh my gosh, what a great show, Mark. Thank you so much. Um, I want to thank everybody for tuning us, turning us on. Please make sure you call in next time. Um, also, we've got some really cool chat things that we're planning for all of y'all. We're really, really excited about what's to come. Mark, again, your website. Let folks know how they can keep sure. track of you. Afterlifefrequency.com. And I got a lot of events coming up. You can sign up for my newsletter. You can uh, check out my calendar of events and... Uh, Find out about my books and sign it up for a reading. And that's all at afterlifefrequency.com. Also, we got some great shows coming up. No kidding, and right? I'm, ex I'm, I'm really excited. So thank yeah. you, everybody, for tuning in. Dr. Pat, thank yeah. you. Jacob and the whole Transformation Network team, you guys rock and roll. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time. Make sure you make yourselves a fantastic week. And remember, happiness is a choice. We'll see you next time. Hey, everybody, thank you for tuning in to The Psychic and the Doc with Mark Anthony and me, Dr. Pat Basile, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Hey, look, come back next week so we can explore with you more of life's many challenges and learn from fascinating guests. And you know what? Even Mark and me. We'll connect you and discover insights from people in this life and from the afterlife. Extraordinary problems, yeah, they do. They require extraordinary solutions, but step into the world of possibilities with us on The Psychic and the Doc. That's every Thursday, 
4 p.m. Pacific Time, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, right here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. That's TransformationTalkRadio.com. And don't forget, we're also live face-to-face on Facebook.com, Transformation Talk Radio.